SVGs have been around for a long time now and you can do some really awesome things with them. So let's go see how we can actually use them. Hi there, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it. This video is the start of a mini series taking a look at SVGs. And the series really is for complete noobs and I feel well qualified to help you out if you are a complete noob for SVG because I am too. I've long wanted to figure out SVGs, I even bought a book on SVGs to try and really understand them well, and for the longest time I didn't understand them at all, and I just used them in the most basic simple way possible without actually leveraging the advantages that SVGs give you, and I wanted that to change, and I figured since I'm learning all this now and I'm finally understanding it, that it'd be a good opportunity to share this knowledge with you. This video itself is just about what SVGs are and why you should be using them as well as a really basic look at a couple of different ways that you can put an SVG into one of your websites. After that, we're going to look at how you can actually code up your own SVGs, you know, writing it out yourself for simple ones. We'll take a look at how you can create more complicated ones uh, or use more complicated SVGs. And then we'll also look at how we make a nice icon system that uses some CSS variables to do some really cool stuff. And lastly, we're going to be taking a look at how we can add some animations to our SVGs and do some little cool fun trickery and stuff like that because that's one of the really cool things uh, about SVG as far as I'm concerned. Now, as I mentioned, I didn't really understand SVGs for a long time and honestly, they sort of scared me. They look really complicated, um, but they're not as bad as they seem. But then it's also, they look complicated when you look at it, and then there's all these different ways of using it. Should I just link to it? Should it be inline? If it is inline, which way should I be using it inline? So this video itself is gonna be looking at that with the different ways we can use it and some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. So first off, why should we even bother with SVG? Well, it's a good question, um, and to understand it, we should know what SVG is. So SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. I find the name kind of funny, uh, <laughs> just because the word scalable is in there. A vector graphic is something that's made of math and it's inherently scalable. So it's the fact that scalable is in there is kind of weird, but that's okay. So if I take a normal image like a JPEG or a PNG and I make it bigger than 100%, it will lose quality. Um, and that's because these are raster images, which basically means they're made up of pixels and they're limited by that pixel information. So um, here I am in Photoshop, which is a raster image software, and normally it's for photo editing and stuff, and I have a nice crisp looking smiley face here. All the lines look really nice, they look nice and smooth, but if I come and I zoom in on this, it starts getting blurry and you start seeing the edges of everything, and all, all these little squares, these are all the pixels. So every pixel has a bit of information in it. This pixel is white, this pixel is a light gray, a darker gray, darker gray, eventually getting to black, and then we can see here on the yellow too. So I'm at 20 or 2,000, you know, let's see how far we can zoom in on this. And I can get up to 12, almost 13,000% zoom and we can really see these nice big pixels here with all the information. And then this all, when I zoom out, starts getting crisper and crisper um, until I get to the 100% or if I go smaller um, in general, it won't cause any issue. Now this does depend also on the resolution of the images. A lot of things uh, that you'll download on the internet have a resolution of 72 dpi, such as this one, which means there's 72 dots per inch or pixels per inch. Um, and if you go into the print world, you get up to 300, so there's a lot more pixels. So there's more pixels packed into a, the same amount of space, there's more information, you can do a little bit more with those types of images. Um, and that just means if I take this smiley face and I make him bigger, I lose quality on it. So you can see here I've made it a lot bigger and now it's making my image look blurry even though I'm still zoomed out. Um, if we zoom in to 100%, at 100% it's getting all blurry because I've made the image bigger. Those pixels, there was no information in between those pixels. I'm inventing new stuff and I'm trying to invent new information. There was no, inf you know, Photoshop's doing its best but at the end of the day it just makes things start getting blurry. Vectors, on the other hand, are made up of math, which is can be scary, but let's go and see uh, what that's about. So here we are in Illustrator, just to show you a quick example of um, vector graphics in work. So this is the vector we're going to be using uh, for my little demo today. 
And to show you the difference, we just saw Photoshop before. And now in Illustrator, um, if I zoom out, obviously it will stay nice and clear. But if I zoom in, if you look at these lines, they're staying perfectly, perfectly sharp. I can zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. I'm at 12,000% here. I can keep going, keep going. 64,000% zoomed in of the original, and it's still a nice, clean, perfect line. There's no little pixel weirdness going on. So um, they're completely made up of math. If I look at them, um, so as you can see here, they're made up, um, this is made up of what we call anchor points. So we can see that there's these lines on here. So the anchor points are these points here, these ones right there. And these points get handles off of them, which are these funny sort of things that are sticking off, which control how the line is getting from, how the, the line is entering this anchor point, and then how the line is exiting that anchor point. So if I move these, it's controlling the shape of my line and the shape of my face. So you can literally go some, you know, make some interesting shapes. Um, normally the anchors are sort of linked together, but uh, we can also break the anchors and get hard corners, or we can have the anchors do different things in different directions um, and stuff like that. Now, the most well-known vector software is Adobe Illustrator, which is what I'm using right here, but there are free ones like Inkscape, uh, which I have put a link down to uh, in the description below. So one of the advantages with uh, SVGs is that they're scalable. You can make them as big or small as you want, as we just saw, and that can be really nice for some sort of icon system if you need your icons smaller, medium, big, different things in different situations. But another nice thing with them is, because they're made of math, they're just code. Their file sizes are minuscule. And you can actually just put it directly in your code as well. You can put an SVG in with your markup. So that also means they're super lightweight, but it also won't make an HTTP request, which is always good. So just a really quick uh, just overview of the reasons you might want to be using them, but let's go and see how we can actually do it now. All right, so here we are. I'm using VS Code as my code editor, and I have Firefox open over here. So we can embed an SVG just like an image. So the same way you'd link to an image, um, you literally just use an image tag. And here we do, I have it as example.svg. Uh, we might as well give this a little uh, an, a, an SVG. I'll save that and we should see a smiley face show up. So there we go. Now, um, just so we can come and look here, we can see that this is the SVG itself. It's just a whole bunch of stuff. I have some circles, a path. I'm not going to worry too much about all of this right now. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here, though. Um, we're going to sort of focus more on that in the next video. Um, so it's just linking there, and you'll notice that it's pretty big. And the reason it's pretty big is it's going to be responsive, and it's going to grow and shrink with my screen which uh, you probably don't want. So what we normally can do is uh, you have two choices. You can come on to here and assign it a width just like you would an image. So width 50. And you can also give them heights. And you can see that's shrunk it down at nice and small. And I could go to 500 and it's going to be bigger. And I can go up to 5000 and it's going to be absolutely massive. There we go is my gigantic smiley face. Uh, normally, I don't like doing it that way, though. I usually come up into my actual styles. So in here, let's just give this a class of example. And then we can come on to my styles, which normally would be an external file, but just for demo purposes, it's a bit easier to do it here. And I can give this a width of, say, 100 pixels. And save that. And there we go. There is my SVG graphic. Now, this is one way to do it. This is the easy way. This is the way that I often usually would do it. But we can also put an SVG inline instead of having it uh, linked like an image. Now, inline has some advantages as it gives us a bit more control over things. It also is a less, uh, it's not making an HTTP request. It's going to be inline in your code. Um, the only problem is it can add some bulk to your code. Um, so I'm going to leave this guy right here um, just because I'm going to comment it out though. I want to use that as an example in a second. Um, but as I said, we can take this. So I can literally just go to here, copy it. And any text editor should be able to um, open an SVG file like this so you can see it. And then I can literally just paste it in and hit save. And you can see it's right there and it's working. Um, and the reason that it's that size is because this still has the class of example on it. So once again, just to show you that it's working, I can still control how big he is. Um, right here. Now I mentioned I'm going to turn the uh, the second face back on, so we have our two faces. Um, so I mentioned that there is an advantage with this one giving us more control compared to this one. 
So here I have my example and he looks like that and well they look the same. But one cool thing with SVG is it's just made up of code which means we can control it. And we're going to be looking more at what all these things mean but we can see here I have my two eyes. So if I select the class of eye I can change what it looks like. So right now the background on these is um, black but what if I want to do fill and change that to white and I can make the eyes white. But notice how it's only working on this one and it's not changing on this one here. And you know, I could come and even change the color of the face. Fill purple. And the face will change. But once again, it's only changing on this one. It's not changing on this one. Because this one is linking off to an external file. Whereas this one is embedded in my code and I can control it directly. So this gives us a lot more control and different things that we can do on it. So um, I think that's all really neat and cool. The only problem with this is um, if you have a complicated SVG, it can take up lots of line of code. And you might not want to crowd up your markup. Luckily, we can sort of do something similar. And I'm going to use my example too, which is almost the same, except I'm using um, a symbol in here. But I'm going to copy this. And let's add this down at the bottom here. It's exactly the same thing. I've just wrapped it all in a symbol and you'll notice it's not appearing on my screen anywhere. So it's in here. Um, let's comment these two out for the moment. Um, so it's if we look here, it's not showing up on my screen anywhere, but I can come into here and once again, uh, I need an SVG. So I can write SVG like that. And then in here it's called use. So we want to use an SVG pretty much. We just have to tell it what we want to use and we give it an href. Now this href is going to look for an ID, um, which is the reason I have an ID on my symbol here. So href and example. Save that and my smiley face appears. Now the cool thing with this is it's still in line um, and generally what you do is you'd have this saved down at the bottom somewhere. So it would be all the way out of, out of the way of your code. It's all the way at the bottom. You could have a, a whole bunch of SVGs in there. So that means I still get the control that I wanted. So face could be uh, fill red. So I still get the control that I had before, but I only am using um, a little bit of code here. And you could even you know, throw it on one line if you really wanted to. Um, now, the one thing is, if you are going this route, H, there, the old way of doing it was xlink href like this. So if I save that, it's still going to work. Um, this was the old way of doing it with SVG1. SVGs reach level 2, so it's SVG2 we're at now. And this has been depreciated. And all the browsers support xlink, or without the xlink. Everything supports it with just an href like this, except for Safari. Safari still needs the xlink. Hopefully that changes in the future because xlink has been depreciated. So hopefully we get rid of it and we fall back. Um, one thing you can do if you want to just make sure for browser compatibility reasons is you could just put it twice, uh, which is kind of annoying. But it won't hurt. It will still work and you won't have any issues um, if you want to use it like this. Um, now, I'm going to be going into a lot more detail. So the next video, as I mentioned, is going to be looking at um, sort of this whole fill thing and how we can make our own SVGs in the browser, writing the code ourselves. And then the video after that is going to explore this a little bit more because um, this can be really useful for coming up with nice icon systems and doing stuff like that. So that can be really useful. And we'll be looking at that in another future video. And there we have it, the very basics of SVGs. Turns out they're not that scary after all. And in the next video, we're going to see how we can actually code them up ourselves. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, please leave one down below. If you're too shy to leave a comment, at least hit that thumbs up and let me know you liked the video. A big thank you to my patrons who helped make these videos possible. And the, my patrons are actually the ones who voted for the SVG series to be the one that went into action next. So one of the perks of being a patron is you can help decide the direction that the channel is going. So if you're curious about that, you can go and check out my Patreon. It's linked down below. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.